back to a City Planner Plays City Builders where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And just after I finished the previous recording, we had a slight issue. We had a fire and I hadn't saved the game just yet. And uh, in the comments for Bluffside Crossing, there was someone who mentioned that the fire department cannot actually reach a city park without the ability to use helicopters and have a, a fire helicopter depot. I don't have one, so the fire department burnt down, or the, so the uh, so the park burnt down. But there's another complication to this. I have the uh, Natural Disasters DLC, so I can't rebuild these buildings unless I have the uh, the correct uh, building. And that building that I need, let me see, it is the disaster response unit. So we're gonna have to build one of those today, but the main thing I wanted to do in this episode was focus on mass transit and I thought that it would be great to get trams in the city uh, but we're gonna need to do both the tram uh, the, we're gonna want to build both the tram system and the uh, disaster response uh, unit so we're gonna be doing some work not just in this old industrial district which I think we're finally ready to dezone um, there's not much left but I think we're also going to want to relocate some of these buildings. So there's going to be a lot of work today. So I'm going to pause it, uh, which is something I don't generally love to do. Um, but I'm going to do that because there's going to be a lot of work in this area. So I am going to move some of these polluting uses and it's, it's easy to see where they are. When you take a look at this map, we have our inland water treatment plant and a couple of recycling centers. I need to get these moved because I want to take Semper Verde Boulevard and connect it to this roundabout. And I think that's going to be important because right now Semper Verde is going to go right into this natural reserve and stop, which will prevent all of our east-west connectivity. So we're going to want to fix that and this is a way to do that. So I'd like to start, let's get this road across the railroad bill. Now this is where I'm going to house a lot of my dirty stuff. Uh, so this is going to be recycling centers, industrial, um, things in the future that I don't want necessarily to be in the middle of the city. And I think I'm going to start out right off the bat by remedying my issue last time. And I'm going to build a, uh, a, a helicopter depot for the fire department. I also want to make sure that I'm building these uh, fire watchtowers so that the, the, the helicopter depot is actually effective. And I know that we're going to need one in this park because of how many trees are here. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to use this as the launching pad to start a local road over here. And I want to move my recycling centers over there. Now this should provide excellent access to the entire community. Now, another thing to think about is 29 years have passed, so it's not totally unreasonable that things like this would be moving. Um, they might be at the end of their useful life, and there might be a need to, you know, reconstruct or expand some of these things. Now, I, I, I do want to at some point put together a public works campus, but that's not what we're doing today. So I'm gonna relocate this here for the time being. We're still going to have a new public works campus at some point, that's just not now. And now I'm going to dezone this industrial. And I'm also going to take a look at a couple of the... Let's, well, let's let these buildings go away. And some of our uh, commercial zoning districts are going to be weird now. And we're going to want to fix those. So... So I suppose weird wasn't the best planning term. <laughs> so what I meant by weird is that because of the way the buildings develop, because of the former development, um, it wasn't maximizing the, the space uh, efficiently. So I wanted to clean that up a little bit and that meant eliminating a couple of buildings that maybe shouldn't have been eliminated. But I think it's for the best. So now we have really kind of a clean slate here. And I want Evan Street to turn into Semper Verde so we can get it to the roundabout. So I'm going to make that change now. 
And now I want Evans to merge gently into Semper Verde. Now, in what will likely be the most expensive project that the city has ever undertaken so far, we are going to uh, acquire a strip of right-of-way right here and take out a number of residential properties. This would be a very controversial project, it would probably take years, but in city skylines it takes a matter of seconds. <laughs> right-of-way acquisition is, is, is an immense challenge, so that kind of project would not happen overnight. So we have that done, we've utilized the powers of eminent domain, and we ha now have a nice collector going through this entire area. So now we need to make our connection to the roundabout. Okay, so now we have a nice connection. Let's clean up our roadway naming. And let's also clean up our junctions. So I want to make sure that we are prioritizing Semper Verde. This is, well, actually, this is probably the only spot where I'll leave an intersection, or a, a signalized intersection in place. The thought there being that Evans and Semper Verde has kind of a uh, kind of an unsafe configuration without uh, a signalized intersection, so we'd want to make that a signalized if at all possible. Okay, so now we have that connection made, and I'm fairly pleased with how this turned out. So the next thing I want to think about is getting utilities across the roundabout. We need to make sure that our buildings over there are working. Now we need to get power over there and I think what I'm going to do to get the power over there is actually run a new power line along the side of the railroad corridor. Okay, so now we should have all of our buildings over here working correctly. And we'd probably want to grade separate this at some point, but for the time being, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. We don't really have any rail traffic in the city, so the traffic that's coming through is, is really just going through the region. Okay, so now we have this working. I also want to set up our tram system, or at least lay the foundation for it. And the place that I've been thinking that I'd want to do that is actually across this, uh, across the uh, across the rail corridor as well whoops okay just thinking about this very carefully because one of the challenges that we're going to run into is this roundabout I don't want this to go through the roundabout because that would ultimately lead to some challenges as far as is actually uh, getting through the roundabout. It would potentially slow things down in the roundabout and that is not what we're looking to have happen. So I am gonna use uh, just a tram road for the time being to get the trams out of this district. And I think we are gonna go up as slowly as we can and try to bridge over the rail corridor and bridge to get to Semper Verde. That's not going to work because we have a, a signalized intersection right there um, at the roundabout. So let's let's give this some more thought. And I think that the place where it might make more sense is right here, um, which is our last intersection that we have right now before our before uh, kind of going to the roundabout. So, and then what we'll do is try to mirror Semper Verde behind it. You know, I'm just not loving the location of any of this, so I think we're gonna take a step back. So what I'm thinking is, this is normally, if, if I were playing in a modded build, this would be a great location for an Ikea or something. But, since we're not modding in this particular build, this is a great location for the tram depot. And I say that because there's gonna be a lot of noise back here already, so why not use the um, use the environment that already exists back there in our favor. Now 
This, in my mind, is significantly better. So now we have the ability to, to get our tram depot connected up with our network in a way that is a little bit more logical. So we'll bring this down and one of the nice things is now I can potentially separate this tram traffic from Semperverde for a little bit longer and keep it away from the, 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 the park that we have set up. I, I, I just converted these to be a tree-lined uh, uh, collector, but I'm thinking this might actually be a great place to have tram access. And the main reason for that is we're going quite a ways into the community and I can deviate once I get a little bit deeper in. Now the, pro the challenge here is going to be that there aren't a lot of east-west streets that will go all the way through. Now that I'm looking, Semper Verde might be the best to place the tram on. It is going to add more pressure to this corridor and it's going to mean that in the future we do need to make a highway connection on the interstate again. Okay, and in the last moment there, you kind of saw me hovering around, making sure that the roads could actually be upgraded. Sometimes with the dirt roads, you can't actually upgrade them. So I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that I could upgrade the roads before investing too much time into them. So now our tram system should work in this area once we get power to the tram station. And for power, I think I'm just going to do a little bit of zoning. And this is going to be a fairly loud area. So I think commercial and honestly office would probably be the most appropriate in this area. But since we don't have any universities right now, we're not going to, to zone any, any office. So we're probably just going to have a commercial note over here. And truthfully, that makes sense. This would have excellent access to the highway, so you, you would think that this would be an ideal location for uh, commercial activity to occur. This is a fairly large chunk of land without any, any breaks, so I am going to have a multi-use trail through there, and this will help when people want to get to the tram anyway. And I'm noticing that we now have some junctions that I don't want, so let's take care of those as well. Ooh, some junctions in our roundabout, don't want those either. And we have an extra road, Chester Street. We will, uh, we'll need names for these later. Same thing with Myrtle Avenue, but for now we're okay. Lots of little streets that we're gonna need names for, truthfully. And I think that we're gonna, we might not focus on that as much today and get to that in the next episode. There are a number of things I wanna take care of that I haven't been able to because of some of the disaster things happening right now. Okay, so now we need stops along our route. Actually, we're gonna do that after we place our disaster response unit. So, one of the things about this building is it's just, it's so big. And, uh, you know, I could do something fairly unrealistic, buy this tile and, and start making a downtown over here. But I think what I, what I want to do instead is use this new zone that we have, work this building into it and increase the density in the area. So, that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to eliminate just a portion of 5th Street. So we're going to need to figure out how to get bikes around and try to work the building in here. The nice thing is this is all city-owned property. So you could assume that it would be fairly simple for the city to make these changes. Well, maybe that's, maybe that's being a little, um, a little generous. Maybe not simple, but doable possible okay so I'm gonna place that here and then I think I'm gonna line this with trees we also need to get a bike connection through here now because we no longer have that we also have a gap here so what I think I'm gonna do is take a look at our bike connection upgrade this make this connection here and make some targeted bike connections. Now one of the things that I don't love right now is that the connection isn't necessarily being made very cleanly. It's kind of just extending over. 
So maybe I'll just make a new road and I'll name that fifth as well. And uh, we'll have fifth extend through there. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Okay. And since we're modifying our right of way, I am going to relinquish right of way in this area. Uh, that's called evacuation. I think I've talked about that before. It is a lengthy process, but it is doable. Now that I'm thinking about this a little bit more, I want fifth to actually seem like a connection. So we're, a lot of lot of destruction today. Okay, now we have a nice smooth connection for Fifth Street, which is the thing I was trying to do. All right, now let's put our path connections back through here. And now that we're making so much changes in this area anyway, you know, why not do a little bit of decorating in this area? The trees are gonna look terrible for the time being, but they'll get better. Okay, so we have that. Let's also think about our zoning. Like I said, I want this area to be a little bit more dense. So we're going to up zone here. Now this is something that I wish the game handled a little bit better. Um, unfortunately, you can't just rezone a property and, and have the density increase. So we have to actually dezone these buildings and uh, they will be demolished. It's not ideal, but it's what we're going to have to work with, unfortunately. Okay, and I want to make a trail connection to Evan Street. Okay, and lastly, we need to take a look at our zone and set the policies. So this zone is mostly where I want it to be, but this is brand new at this point, so I'm going to extend it out and take part of the Summit District. And we're gonna have the, we're gonna change the policies a bit. So first of all, build their industrial waste, not necessarily a thing we need anymore, nor do we need workers' unions, but Ooh, I want a high-rise band and we don't have enough population. Might let this sim while we do the rest of this because that's something I do care about. I'm also going to, I want to lower taxes for high density in this area to encourage growth. So while we're, our population's increasing, I do want to start thinking about our tram network. And we're gonna to wanna to think about stop spacing. So first of all, let's get our first stop in the shopping district. And I'm seeing that we don't have a loop here, so we might need to actually create one. So where I put this, uh, this trail, I think we are gonna to need to add a loop. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to complete our route. Okay, and that'll function as a trail too, so it's not the end of the world. Now I missed the measure tool because I try to space this appropriately, but this is a tram. I want it to go fairly quick, but still provide good access. So I'm gonna leave our connections at these paths. So I know that a lot of people have been wondering, why the paths? Well, that's why. Great place for transit. Okay, now with transit, it's, oh, all right, there we go. Small city, city like that. So we get lots of new things, uh, trains, cable cars, um, some monorail, cargo train terminal. So that's gonna be something we wanna build soon. Um, hydroelectric power plants, yoga garden, basketball arena, so quite a bit of stuff. And uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. So let's take a look. So what I was saying is with transit, you want to make sure that you're mirroring stops so that it, no matter which way you're going, you have the ability to get back and forth. And you can already see all of the people lining up 
to use this route. It's going to be very popular because it provides access to a number of destinations. So whether you're going to this downtown type area or you're going to work, you could use this to get to where you want to go. We also have high tech housing now, finally. So I do want to have a high rise band here. I don't want the buildings to get out of control, but I do want some density. And there's a small area here that doesn't have water. So I will fix that too. And the whole reason we built that building is now uh, we, we can rebuild all of our park buildings. So the, the disaster response unit has surveyed this area and now we know that we're safe to rebuild. So we're good there. Park's starting to come back to life. And that building doesn't look completely out of place. I think it would be nicer to orient this towards Semper Verde, but this works too and it does look nice from the side, so uh, once this fills in a bit, I think it'll look even better. And I like that we have transit going through uh, Sterling Park, which is our uh, sustainable buildings neighborhood. You just see that these, all the people coming to this transit route, it's, it's really impressive. Um, one of the things we're probably gonna need to do is take a look at our line and see how many people are queuing. You can see this stop right here, which is just on the other side of Main Street. It has a lot of people queuing, and a lot of the vehicles coming up to it are already full. So there is a chance that we need to actually increase the number of vehicles on our line. But there's a real delicate balance you want to have there, because the last thing you want is vehicles, um, you know, uh, coming in groups. That's not not ideal. So we're gonna to need to keep an eye on this. And in the future, we're probably gonna to want to establish a bus system that will allow us to uh, you know, kind of have some feeder service into this backbone tram network. I'm also a little curious as to how um, things are operating over here. There's a lot going on. So let's take a look at our traffic real quick. Oops, it's not too bad. And once we uh, establish our cargo train uh, terminal, that might might clean things up a bit here. Maybe even get us closer to 90. So we'll see. So I do want to do one more thing. There were some complaints about the number of intersections on Main Street, and I agree. And I wanted to make sure that we don't have any wonky stuff going on here, and we do. We have lots and lots of stops for no apparent reason. The only signalized intersection here should be Semper Verde. The rest of these are local roads going into the collector. We want to prioritize that collector and have free flow traffic there. So here I'm okay with that and that this makes it so that basically there aren't nearly as many junctions on this collector. Let's see what that did to traffic. You can see it lightening up just by a little bit of, of a traffic management right there. Okay, so I think we're in a good spot for today. There's certainly some more things I hope to accomplish, but I think that uh, we're moving in the right direction. This neighborhood over here is, is, is doing well. Basically at two going on three for every, almost every building here. and That's simply because of transit access and a great location and proximity to the interstate. So yeah, people are walking to get here or driving, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there. Um, actually, there I'm not gonna leave it there just yet. There's one thing I remember I forgot, and I don't want to forget about this. So I have one of my fire towers over there. I wanted to have another one near the forestry district. Makes a ton of sense to me that we'd want to have one over here because of the number of trees. So we will add that over here. All right, so with that, I'm gonna leave it uh, I am going to rename some of these neighborhoods. I didn't get to that today, but I thought we had more pressing issues. So we'll do that in the next episode, along with uh, some city expansion. I do want to start moving, uh, moving east. I want to start making some connections into this park and start defining it and, and let you know what my ideas are for the park. Uh, but for today, I think we're in a good place. So thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified as soon as I release new videos, please hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.